Okay. A word about salt water capacitors. A lot of interesting stuff out there online about them. Nothing really mysterious. Although I see some people that, that kind of missed the point of using salt water and why and how. So, um, it'll be a little demonstration. Um, this stuff is so easy to put together, costs nothing really. Um, start off with a plastic bottle or a glass bottle or a jar, whatever you got. Um, I chose this particular one because it's made of plastic. It's relatively thick, a little bit thicker than your typical soda bottle would be, although those do work. Um, in fact, they give a higher capacitance because the walls are thinner. Uh, that does play a role. In fact, these plastic ones, because the walls are thinner than the typical glass bottle or jar of the same size, uh, w would be thicker. Uh, these do work better. Very lightweight, of course, you know, disposable, dirt cheap. This was, uh, used to have peanuts in it. Uh, but it's a fairly rigid plastic container. Perfect dielectric for what I'm going to use it for. Um, these withstand many thousands of volts. They they will eventually give up and, and it'll punch a hole through it. So what? You get another one. How much does it cost? You know, a jar of peanuts or a soda. Um, that's going to be the dielectric. This is actually going to be what stores the charge. Not the electrolyte, not the salt water, but this, the, the, the surfaces of this, the inner and outer surfaces of this are what's going to store the charge. This is your common 2 liter soda bottle, pop bottle, if you like. Um, this is just a container. It really serves no purpose other than to contain the outer electrolyte. Uh, the, the salt water that's going to be on the outside of this. Uh, what, what some folks are doing, and they're calling them salt water capacitors, really aren't. They'll put aluminum foil or some conductive metal foil around the outside of it, of uh, their uh, dielectric, and then they'll fill the inside with salt water. Well, that's a half a salt water capacitor. The whole of the salt water capacitor is when you have salt water on both sides, both plates are conductive liquid, salt water. You could use Epsom salt, you could use vinegar if it, you don't mind the stink. Uh, but salt, cheap and handy and, you know, not difficult to find these. So, salt water. The reason for the salt, of course, is to make the liquid more conductive. You could just use tap water, but it's not as conductive as salt water is. Now, for about two liters of liquid as an electrolyte, which will be uh, both the inside and outside uh, plates of this capacitor, I just use a quarter cup of salt. You don't have to saturate the mixture. You can. It doesn't really gain you much um, other than a mess. Um, as far as what you use to dip down into the the salt water, um, your mileage may vary. I found that brass wire works best, but for short-term experiments, I use paper clips because they're nice and stiff. They're made of steel. They're plated, I think, with nickel or something. Um, more on that later. So the object here is to have an internal plate and an external plate, both made of salt water. So we're going to fill this up to this line, maybe a little bit above, and we're going to fill this up to this line, uh, pre-measured. Uh, nothing uh, critical about these dimensions or anything. Now, you can see there are some leaves I left on the top of this. Here's the original top, and that came about like that. Uh, 
you'll see the reason I left these these four leaves in, in a second. Um, it kind of tends to hold everything centered. Otherwise, this would kind of be flopping around. So it just seems to help. Whatever method you've got, it doesn't matter. You could use a rag. Now, normally, the best way to do this is to fill it up to almost the top with, with your salt water. And same thing here. And you want maybe to fill this up so that when it's in there, when this is inside of that, uh, that this is it filled a little higher so that it doesn't tend to float. Then you would top it off with oil. Best choice is mineral oil, but vegetable oil will work uh, just as well. It goes rancid after a while, but you know it's easily replaced and it's dirt cheap and something you can dump down the drain without worrying about it. So none of it's toxic. Well, it can be a little dangerous, but it's, the, the materials used to make this are disposable and, and, and innocuous, in my view. So, uh, what do we got? Our two containers. I've got some pre-measured, pre-mixed salt water. Not saturated. Uh, not boiled or anything. Just some salt water and some cool water, or some salt and some cool water. The power supply I'm going to use to charge this capacitor for testing is um, a homebrew. Uh, it's bas basically a, a flyback supply. Uh, more on that later, but the point is, I'm going to crank up the Not something you want to really directly expose yourself to. Although it's not, it's not really going to uh, injure you. It will hurt. And about 25,000 volts or so, maybe a little more than that. Adjustable. And but you see the the uh, oh gosh the the power of the pop of, of those arcs is, yes, yeah, they do snap, but there's very little capacitance in, in this uh, to give a good pop, to give a good uh, loud cracking arc. You apply that kind of voltage to one of these capacitors and it will. So, we don't do that. I've already prepared some things. As I said, I've got some salt water there. This is the lid to the peanut jar. It already has a hole poked in it. I'm just going to screw on there. I'm going to fill it up to here with salt water. And I've got these paper clips soldered onto steel balls. Those are my electrodes. The paper clip just dips down into the salt water. Very simple. Just like that there. And there will be another one that will poke through one of these leaves and make electrical contact with the salt water on the outside of the dielectric. Pretty simple. Just shove it in there. Just like that. So, next thing, quickly, fill her up. of the salt water on the upper parts. Looks about right. Fill this up. So I'm going to add a little bit of clean water to it in the center.
place when you're messing with high voltages. Part of the so, normally you'd want to top this off, both the inside and the outside, with oil. If you're really serious about it, maybe even save the top half of the two liter bottle to, to RTV on to make it more portable and less spillable. But for this purpose, this will work fine. Salt water everywhere, notwithstanding. So I'm going to connect the high voltage positive to this. Terminal, so we make it stay, and the ground to the outside, which you would typically want to do because you don't want a high potential between this plate, that is this outside salt water, and your ground. It's just pointless, unless of course you have another larger um, bottle of some sort around that, and then you could make layers and layers and layers of it. And, had a heck of a lot of capacitance. So, that's it. Um, that The plastic of this internal bottle will withstand 25,000 volts across it. And what the uh, salt water does, it's, 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 think of it just as a conductor, but it is in intimate contact with every surface of this bottle both inside and out. You cannot achieve that with foils you, or coatings. Just, you can't. Not only that, uh, the exclusion of air is important for corona discharge, which will very quickly uh, li limit the capability of the plastic to withstand the high voltage. So, you saw the arcs coming across it before. Uh, without this capacitor. That's with. Now, it's tracing across the surface. Let me see if I can avoid that. Like I said, there's salt water everywhere. With much, much more care and some oil to insulate the surfaces. Um, Okay. Works really well. Let's try that. It's still doing it. Trust me. You do not want to get across those terminals. And this is what, maybe a, almost a liter of salt water and some wire, a, a paper clips for crying out loud. Now it doesn't hurt to have a high voltage supply there uh, available, uh, easily made at home, really. Uh, but uh, they can be had, open up an, an old CRT type television set and You've got what you need right there. Uh, look it up. Um, let's see if I can get this to not bark on its own without coercion. Oops. These high voltage wires tend to be stiff. Just a paper clip, maybe two inches of that, dipping down into the uh, the salt water. Yeah, it's still popping all the way around this. Got some wet on it.
if you do make this, be so, 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 so careful. Uh, uh, I've taken only a partial hit from one of these. And um, yeah, I'll tell you, man, it's, it's bad. Uh, a full hit with that voltage across it, I don't even want to think about it. That that's dangerous so to be careful messing around with this stuff I know it's such a simple thing it's just some salt water and a plastic bottle crying out loud and let's say you charge this thing and then you take it apart guess what the charge still exists and it will bite you careful maybe a little bit about this power supply. I'll see if I can piece it together depending on time. See you. Okay, this high voltage su uh, power supply is um, homebrew. Originally I made this to uh, power a helium neon laser. Um, it worked okay for that. Um, I've had a component blow out in it because that's kind of abuse of it. A little too much current uh, drawn from it, from this laser. The laser was, uh, gosh, I think 5 milliwatts. Uh, this is actually capable of putting out a little bit more than that. Um, it'll do about 1 or 2,000 microamp, 1 or 2 milliamps, uh, which is not too bad, uh, continuous. It was enough to fire up the laser, but it does have other uses. Obviously, charging capacitors would be one of them. Um, uses a flyback, liberated from a monitor, a computer monitor. It also uses a cascade tripler, which is a, you know, a sort of rectifier capacitor circuit that takes the AC out of the flyback transformer, which in this case is about. 8,000 volts, maybe a little more, and rectifies it into direct current, DC, and also triples the voltage value. Now, of course, that comes at a cost. There's a current limitation with it, but uh, does get you the voltage. Uh, the tripler in there was taken from a, a color TV. I think a Trinitron. Very well made one. So anyway, in here. to it. There's the flyback transformer here, this assembly. That had to be replaced once already. Well, the original one I had in here just melted down. Overuse. Uh, there's the tripler circuit. It's the diodes and capacitors in there that rectify, turn the AC voltage coming out of the flyback into DC, which is sent out the wire. Uh, the output of this, when set on maximum, is uh, at least 25,000 volts, probably a little bit more than that. Uh, the supply voltage to this whole circuit and is maximum 24 volts, so it's converting 24 volts DC into 25,000 volts DC, although at a much lower current. Not a lot, <laughs> not a lot to see in here, you know, power switches. Uh, there is a control here that allows you to tweak the operating frequency. It centers about 15,000 cycles, 15 kilohertz, um, because that's what this flyback was designed for. Um, it's variable because certain loads cause it to chirp or hunt or did did did. And so you can get it off of that by changing uh, uh, some of the feedback, the way the oscillator works. Uh, there are no integrated circuits in here. It's got two transistors. Um, it's very primitive. A bridge rectifier, it's a 120 volts. Well, actually, this is a very a uh, very uh, variable transformer. Think like a train transformer. Only this one goes from zero to 132 volts. Is what comes out of this. That feeds into this, which, if you put 120 volts in it, 
gives you about 24 out. That's rectified, filtered by this here beefy ass capacitor. By today's standards, that's nothing. And um, that 24 volts DC, 25, 26 volts DC uh, feeds the oscillator. Uh, there's a name for it, it escapes me at the moment, who cares? So anyhow, that's that's all that's in here. I mean, very, very little. More than there need to be, actually. Um, this whole, well, this whole part could be eliminated because it will also run on an external DC supply. It could be one or two 12 volt batteries. It'll work just fine on 12 volts or, or 24 volts of DC in. Doesn't give you the uh, advantage of being able to tune the voltage or adjust the voltage. You know, it, it is what it'll be. But for running a helium neon laser and that kind of thing, demonstrations out in the field, um, yeah, it works just fine. So, that's that.